This is the FX Wildcat Mark II from FX Airguns of Sweden. This is the UK sub 12 foot pound version, which means it's license free and it's a beast. And it's flipping accurate as well. Oh, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. I got it on a free upgrade and it's got a 960 frames per second feature on the camera. So you know where this is going. This video contains a review of a pellet rifle. It's powered entirely by compressed air and uses no gunpowder and must not be confused with any form of tactical firearm and my targets are paper and tins. Always shoot safely and show consideration to others around you. Years ago, air rifles used to look like this and admittedly, you'd be lucky to hit a baked bean tin at 15 yards with that. Come forward to modern day and air rifles look like this. And as I say, this is the FX Wildcat Mark II. Yes, there's a Wildcat Mark I and they do kind of look pretty similar. Even a blind tiger would be able to spot that. FX have, however, made some changes in the Mark II, and one of those is revolutionary. The Mark I is still a fantastic gun, and I've made a video on it before, and I'm gonna put a link in the description box below if you want to watch it. The Wildcat Mark II is an eight-shot magazine rifle, powered by compressed air, and you fill it from a dive bottle or pump using the probe and I'm filling to around 230 bar. The Wildcat is all about the radical design, and in particular that side lever loading system. It's quick and efficient, which means you can take a shot very fast. Others have tried to imitate it, but I actually think this bullpup has got that side lever loading system just right. Am I gushing about the Wildcat? Well, yes, just a little bit. I love you. Uh, too much information. I think I'm taking that a little bit too far. The fit and finish on the rifle is super high quality with the parts milled to a super sleek finish, no burrs or sharp edges. The trigger is bladed and breaks with consistent ease every time. The gun without the moderator is approximately 68 centimeters long with 50 centimeters of that being the barrel so it's a super compact action. When you compare that with a normal style rifle, that's around 32 centimeters less to carry. The shroud at the front offers a small amount of inbuilt moderation and sits just above the 230 cc cylinder, which has the pressure gauge on the front. Just a smidge over six pounds minus any add-ons makes this a light compact rifle which others around the world have blinged up and tricked out. This rifle would sit well in the latest Call of Duty game. 230 shots from that regulated system puts the pellet right on target time after time, with an average 603 feet per second using a JSB 13.43 pellet. That equates to an average 10.85 foot-pounds. Minelli wooden stock and mines a laminate. Other styles are available and the whole action nestles down into that Italian wood. At the back, just above the action there, is the cheek piece. And that cheek piece is made of plastic, but it's really well finished and actually feels really comfortable on your face. You also think that you probably get a bit of a ping coming up every time you fire a shot. Well, actually, it's no more noticeable than on a traditional PCP rifle. Bear in mind that what you see here, I have added extras to. I've had to put the scope on the top and I've added a side shot to capture footage as well. I've also added a bipod and a Picatinny rail on the front of mine. I'm just gonna show you this. I'm gonna take you off my, there we go. So I'm using my side shot to capture all that. Let's take you off. Let's give you a walk down. There it is, that. Ah. That's my eight shot group at 25. Yeah. You might be thinking that's all a bit fancy pants for an air rifle. And yes, you could well be right. 
this does cost nearly a thousand pounds but and it's a big but that is going to be money well spent from the moment i opened the case it made me go oh and is it accurate you bet your left testicle it is at 25 and 50 yards the gun is bang on do you see what i did there is it more accurate than the mark one well i would say so but we are talking millimeters and if millimeters is what makes you tremble then the barrel on this is what you need and that revolutionary bit on the gun is called the x barrel now I've no idea why it's called the X barrel. The factory is called FX Air Guns. You aren't really going to call it the F barrel, are you? No, I'm just going to go and get me F barrel. That's not going to work, is it? So it's called the X barrel and it leaves the original barrels out there from years ago standing. In fact, they're at the back of the party room waiting to go home with something ugly. Before you do anything with a gun, always make sure it's safe and unloaded. This X barrel is interchangeable using a liner system. In the future, different liners will mean you can adjust spin rates on pellets and possibly homemade ammo. Plus, there is torque, laws depending, slug liners. And if you have this rifle, all you need to do is pop the liner out you don't want to use and pop in the one you do. If you clean your barrel by taking the liner out, you're going to get a point of aim change. Therefore, I suggest taking this cover off here by just undoing this screw there, like that, and then undoing these two screws here, these two Allen screws, like that. Do them like that, see? And then, with the shroud still in place, you can just slide the whole barrel out. Do the cleaning you need to do, and then slide it back, line it up, which you do by popping this one all the way off. And you can see this little gold dot here, which tells you you've lined back up correctly. And then you simply tighten it all back up. Like that. That's a really easy way to clean your barrel. Put that bit back on. Something I do want to point out is the quality of the crowning on these barrels. Now, at both ends, it is incredibly clean and smooth. And that is very, very important for when you're shooting your rifle for that pellet to enter and exit the barrel as cleanly as possible. And that crowning is second to none. In the UK, my Wildcat Mark II in 2.2 came with the original smooth twist barrel fitted. To get the X barrel, you have to upgrade. Now that seems to be only in 2.2. If you buy the 177 version, you get the X barrel on board. That could change in the future, so I'm saying check with your local dealer. 230 shots from one charge, or half a tin of pellets. Take the stock off and you can see the direct connection from the trigger, which is up forward at the front, to the action at the back. And you can see that it's a direct rod. It's a good sturdy rod as well. And at the rear, you can see where you can make all your adjustments to your stages on the trigger. You can also see at the back that the gun has a safety on board as well. However, just to point out that safety is only fully actionable when the gun is actually cocked. It doesn't go all the way back until you actually cock the gun. Outside of the UK, this can be set up to 47 foot pounds. You need a slightly longer barrel and that would be in 2.5 caliber. If you're lucky enough to have a firearms ticket in the UK, you can have that power level as well. Currently, I have a permission in a cramped barn in low light, and that means I can take advantage of my stubby quick fire setup that I have here. But as the nights get longer, I will be changing to this setup for some field work. Shh, superhero. You just shot Batman. I know, you try and get a rat to stand there while I'm filming. True. Wildcat 1, Batman nil. But in all seriousness, 
If you're going to use the Wildcat and you need some stealth, I strongly advise that you put a silencer on the end of it. On the back of the rifle is a fixed rubber shoulder pad. Hmm, not so sure on that bit. Got to be honest with you, I'm built like Shrek, so I need as much adjustability as I can get. I've had my Wildcat Mark II for about five months now, and it's not coughed or spluttered at any point. But I'm going to tell you guys the same thing as I say over and over again. Put a decent pellet through your rifle. It's going to make a big change to the results that you get. If you decide that you're going to spend all your money on this and then spend just a few pounds on a cheap tin of pellets because they're only pellets, then you're a muppet. Use a proper quality tin of pellets. It will make a difference. After all, you wouldn't buy a Ferrari and then shove chip fat in it because it was a couple of pounds cheaper, would you? Just one other thing I'd like to point out. During the filming, please remember that my chest mic is right next to that action. So you will hear the twing and twang when the gun is fired. But in real life, you hear very little. Stick a bipod on the front and you can bench the gun to gain even greater accuracy. So does the Mark II supersede the Mark I? Well, because of that barrel, it is slightly more accurate, so just yes. FX also tell me there are other refinements in this. They say the loading mechanism has been improved along with the valving, but this one never played me up in the first place anyway. I've also had some legendary outings with this, so I'm certainly not getting rid of it. I'm going to have the both. But which one would I choose? It's got to be the X, hasn't it? because I don't want to be left behind. This is the very latest technology in air guns, and this is the very latest technology in mobile phones with a 960 frame per second option on it. I wanted to do the biggest food smash up I've ever done. So I raided the house and everything you're about to see was filmed using these two items.
I hope you enjoyed that. We had a great deal of fun making it. However, I am aware that I did shoot quite a lot of food. We did reuse a lot of food where we could, but I'm also aware that there is a food shortage for some people out there in the world. So I made a donation of 50 pounds to my local food bank. Thanks for watching. Thank you.